This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Butterfield versus Williams. You all have been together 11 years. You're married. You have two, count them, two sets of twins together. And you are worried, and this marriage is on the rocks because you believe he's with another woman half your age. Miss Butterfield, tell us why you brought this case and what's at stake. Your Honor, I'm here today to prove that he is cheating in my house. And when I find out he's cheating in my house, I'm gonna blow the roof off this courtroom. <laughs> okay, in your house. Not in, in your house, house, but in your house. In my house. But Mr. Williams, I gotta think that these allegations of, that are being thrown at you have got to bother you. Tell me how you're feeling about this. Well, I feel uncomfortable. You know, I, I always be on the road a lot, and when I'm coming home and stuff, it's like... Stop lying. Always, excuse me? I get yelled at and, well, what you doing now and all this stuff here, and, and this is like, it's uncomfortable. And I'm like, I'm just trying, well, I'm here to just pretty much get down to the bottom of it, like, really, I'm just sick of it. All right, what so about me? What about how I feel? Then that's what I was going to ask you, Miss Butterfield. How are you feeling in this situation? I'm feeling hurt because it's like I took people in to help them out. I've been with him. I married him. I want to be with him. And it really hurts to know that he's sleeping around with somebody in my house. Yeah, I got to say, that would not uh, pass the test in the Cutler home. That would not be the... <laughs> that would not be going on. I couldn't live with that. So... In order to see how we got here, I need to understand how we got here. So tell me how you all met and how you got started. Well, I met him on the dating website. Okay. And he inboxed me about 10 times. Really? Come on now. We used to go out, spend time together, and it was like after my first set of twins were born, everything, he was the one. He was everything. So, after you had been together and started your family, it was like, okay, this is the one for me. Yes. All right. So, what was it about her that you liked? Her personality. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was charming. She pretty much, you know, made me feel that this is the one that I want to be with, mm -hmm. that I want to spend my life with. And that's how it pretty much clicked. It's like one, two, three, everything is clicked, and we was on. So, you knew that you had found the woman of your dreams. Right. So, Miss Butterfield, I gotta know. I gotta know. How did he propose to you? What did that look like? I proposed to him. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. what I'm talking about. Well, yeah. well, 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 yeah. well. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, she proposed what to me. What you yeah. talking about, Mr. Cutler? Yeah, I'm talking about... Script. Yeah. You know, I'm all for men proposing to women, but every once in a while, it's good to hear a woman take that first step and say, you know what? I want him so much, I'm gonna st step up. I'm gonna ask you. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay for a woman to do that. All right. Hmm. So, Ms. Butterfield, what did you do and how did you do it? Well, I planned a big party. And I ordered the rings offline. I had his family there and my family there. Okay. Then I got down on one knee and I asked him to marry me. If and I knew all he was going to say yes, because if he didn't, I was going to beat his ass. Oh, oh really? <laughs> huh? So, I you did this in front of all the way, all your family, both sets of family, you proposed to him? Yes. So you had to know he was going to say yes because that's really being out there. Yes, Your Honor. I'm a, I'm a family man. You know, at the time, okay. you know, we already had kids together, you know, trying to start a family. So the right thing to do is go ahead and close the, 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 the next chapter and move on as a family. All right. This sounds so sweet and it's unique that you asked yeah. him and you sound like you all found each other's soulmate. What were the warning signs that you've seen that he's cheating? Because, Your Honor, we was walking down to our room and I heard his phone go off. And I knew it was a notification ringtone. So, when he left, I went through his phone. And I seen the same dating app on there that when we met. Oh. Mr. Uh, Williams, so uh, the dating app that you found the love of your life on, you still had open, you still had active, and you were receiving notifications on it. Hmm. How do you explain that? I'm playing around. You know, we men do stupid stuff and don't think. Hey, hey, know, hey, man. hey, don't bring all of us into this. <laughs> <laughs> you well, did stupid stuff. I do stuff. stupid stuff and don't think and not realizing what type of person I have already in my life. We sat down, talked about it. I admitted to it. I was wrong. I shouldn't have, it shouldn't have happened. And we moved on from there. And you were done? 
with looking at other women. Yes. Right? Right. Right? Right. Okay. Ms. Butterfield, right? No. Excuse no. me? Okay. Really? Why wasn't that the end of it? I did. I don't think I posted Five three. months what ago. Mean? Five months ago. I had a family friend move in. Oh, wow. <laughs> and his eyes get... Every time I look at him, he's looking at her. So, you thinking he's looking at her wishing something was going on? Yes. Do you think something actually is going on? Yes, I do. Spe specifically share with the court why you think he's cheating with this particular woman. Because I went to his truck because my daughter's shoes was in the truck. So, I'm looking in the back seat for the shoes. I reach my hand under his seat. I feel a wrapper. And so I pull the wrapper out. It's condoms. Oh, boy. And I'm like, what are you doing with condoms? So I took a picture. And you submitted that picture to the court? Yes, I did, Your Honor. And then that, that's the three-pack. Where's the other one at? Oh, I don't think so. All right, why you got condoms Whatever. in the car? I don't even know what brand it is. You sure she ain't playing them now? Why, Why would, would she, she do that? Them? I don't know. She accused me of everything else. She might do that too. And that's your story. Yeah. All right. Then your honor. Well, Miss Butterfield, you know, have you found anything that makes you think that he's cheating with this younger woman? Yes, I did. I'm going through my laundry basket to find my pants. And then when I look in his, I found her panties in his laundry basket. Oh. Uh, like when his panties were in our room. Yes. Well, how do you know they were hers? I know they're hers because she wears panties too tight for her. <laughs> Let me show you. All right. No. Well. All now, right. You see, Your Honor, these are mine. They're nice and clean, well adjusted. These are hers. She ripped them because they're too tight for her. Oh. <laughs> and you trying to figure out why are your underwear in my husband's hamper? Exactly. Because she don't he... come in our room, so why, why is her stuff in our room? Mr. Williams, here we are right here in this moment right now. What's your explanation as to why these panties are in your hamper or your basket? Because you have having sex with her. Excuse me. No. I don't do stuff like that. I'm a grown man and a family man, and I don't do stuff like that. Sorry. You got the wrong one, sister. Yeah, okay. I don't know how they got in the hamper. I can't tell. I didn't put them there. Ms. Butterfield, so... where is this hamper that you found it? Is it in your bedroom? Yes, it is. Okay, and does this woman who's half your age, who's living with you, this family friend, does she sleep in your bedroom? No, she does not. Does she have any clothes in your bedroom? No, she does not. Okay, so Mr. Williams, she doesn't sleep in the bedroom, she doesn't have any clothes in the bedroom, she doesn't stay in the bedroom. Why in the world, how in the world, did her panties get in the hamper, the basket that's in your bedroom? I have the clues, clues, clues found out, because I didn't put them there. Mr. Williams, have you slept with this woman? No, ma'am. You yes, have you did. not, your testimony is you have not slept with this younger woman, the woman that's half your wife's age. No, I don't do stuff like that. I'm a grown man. All right, so there's your wife's side, there's the husband's side, and there's the woman who's living in the house side. She is here. Would you, you please escort yes, Ms. Hunt in? Oh, man. Ms. Hunt. Look at this homework and trap. You're doing too much. No. You're doing too much. Wait, you're doing too much. Wait, too much. Maybe you don't want to be dressed like that. We're no hoes. Ain't no hoes. Ain't never. Ain't never no hoes. Ain't never no hoes. Ladies, ma'am. Ladies, you're in a courtroom. Step up here. Thank you. Step up here and have a seat. Ms. Butterfield, it's still a courtroom. You will govern yourself accordingly. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Would you state your name, please, for the court? Miss Kennedy Hunt. Miss Hunt, you've been listening to the testimony. Yes, I have. How did you come to live in their home? Well, Your Honor, I've moved down here recently, actually. I've only been living with them for about maybe six months, and I was with the wrong people. So she took me in. I knew she was living in the same area I was. So she took me in to get me on my feet, and I'm very grateful for that. I would never Obviously do anything. Not. So she... I would never do anything to stab her in the back. She knows that. So Ms. I Butterfield her, is I a friend more... to you. Yes. She's a family friend to me. And I've always had her back. You understand. Yeah, his back, too. Miss, okay, Miss Butterfield. No, she didn't. Huh. So, Miss Hunt, 
you understand that Miss Butterfield believes that you're sleeping with her husband. I don't know why. Okay, but she found your panties in her husband's laundry. Can you explain to the court how that happened? First of all, yes, I can. Okay. I do laundry for the whole house. Maybe if you weren't so lazy and cleaned up, I would... You could do your own laundry, but I'm nice enough to do everybody's laundry in the house. Everybody's laundry gets mixed up. It's a coincidence. Why have you not said anything to my face like a woman like you should have? But now it's coming out, but you didn't say nothing before. You should have came to me like a woman. If you... If I have that respect for you, you should have respect for me. Why you sit there and y'all stare eye to eye? I don't stare eye. Why y'all stare eye to eye? Lord. He's sitting on the couch. You move closer to him. Ooh, please help this girl. This girl's delusional. Miss Butterfield, pull up, okay? I'm a All man. Right. I got eyes. I'm gonna look, but as long as I don't touch you, you ain't got nothing to worry about, you. On what? So you admit you were looking? I mean, I got eyes. I'm a man. What do you expect? I'm a man going to look. Do you like what you see? Look. I like what I see, but uh, like I said, I have boundaries. I, a man could have looks. He can like what he see, but he also have boundaries. Now, if you overstep those boundaries, that's when you have a problem, baby. No. Sometimes you got a problem just looking. What? Mr. Well, Keller, I think yeah. we got it. I mean, here's what we're looking at. I mean, we have this family friend who was living in the house, and Miss Butterfield thinks that Mr. Wims is is got something for her, some kind of attraction for her, and she believes that one because her panties were found in his laundry. There were condoms found in the truck, and they don't use condoms, and there was one missing. Yeah. And all this has caused Ms. Butterfield to believe that Mr. Williams has been cheating, and she's concerned that he's been cheating with Ms. Hunt. Yes. Well, this court has done a complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Rob, would you escort him? Might be cheating on you, but not with me, baby. Guy yeah, Wolf. Well, not with me. We're about to find out today, yeah? Yeah, we really is. Yeah, okay. Keep okay. talking. Now, you all came here to get answers. We're about to get answers. Let's hear what our expert has to say. How are you, Mr. Wolf? I'm wonderful, Your Honor. How about you? Good. It's good to see you. You as well. Would you share your credentials for the court record and then explain how forensic voice analysis works? Yes, ma'am. I've been in law enforcement for more than 20 years, and I've been a certified voice, forensic voice analyst for more than 12 and have conducted more than 900 exams. Forensic voice analysis works by analyzing the spoken word. When you speak, you have AM and FM frequencies on your voice, like on a radio. And when you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. We can then look at that algorithm and determine where somebody's being deceptive. There it is. All right, let's take a look at the first question Mr. Williams was asked. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with Kennedy? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. All right. Okay. Told you. Told you. I don't now do you stuff like in my own home. Sorry. Yeah. Ms. Butterfield, you just found out that he did not have sexual intercourse with Ms. Hunt. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel a little bit better, but that's just one question. So you're still not convinced? No. Oh. Well, oh. let's take a look at the next question. Since being married to Pepper, did you use the condom she found in your truck to have sexual intercourse with another woman? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. What? No, man, uh-uh. Because for one, I don't even know what brand that is. And number two, if it wasn't even was brand, it should have been Magnum because I'm a big size, you heard me? So I don't know. So if it was a brand you recognize, then that means you use it with another woman? No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Obviously. Who, 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 uh, that man knows his work. job. Okay, Mr. Williams, now's the time to try to make this right. You're going to only get this one moment. <laughs> I'm going to give you three seconds. You might as well just tell now. It's all one, now. two, three, go. Okay, I did use one of them. At the time, it was an employee at my job, and it was pretty much like four four months ago. And where did you have sex with this woman? In the truck. Come on, I'm back I'm in right. my van, but I can say it was on that one-time thing. It wasn't nothing that was gonna. 
occur time and time and time again. And I always, you know, if you're going to cheat, you know, okay, it ain't what how you, it ain't what do you mean you cheat? It's how you it, cheat. It ain't, it's, it ain't it's what, the, what? You shouldn't be cheating at all. You shouldn't be cheating at all. You had the unmitigated gall to suggest, well, it was just one time. It was just, I mean, you know, I could, you get one freebie. You know, you don't. You don't get a freebie. Well, you don't wear your right now. So, you can, you can do this, but all I'm hearing is la, 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 because that's what it sounds like. You, Miss Butterfield, you got a family to raise, you got to take care of you, and you need to get about that business. I'm just looking at the expression of Ms. Butterfield's face. It is, it's a mix of everything. Mm -hmm. And we fully understand that. Probably anger is the predominant emotion right now. And that anger is going to subside. And so when that anger subsides, you've got to figure out what you want to do. And our counsel will help you do that. As we say in this courtroom, don't cheat yourself out of a chance for a happy, healthy relationship. Court is adjourned.